under new business item number five. This is a presentation on the Sable Trail Pipeline. <coughs> Mr. John Cordman. Good evening, sir. Good evening, man. Thank you for bringing the presentation. Uh, by the way, you may be thinking of my cousin in the fiction, and I actually have support of Florida General Hospital. Uh, 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 I'm president of the Walls Watershed Coalition. We're like a river keeper. We're just kind of the time to handle at the moment. We're working up to that. And we're the water keeper affiliate to the upper swan basin, including the Wood Pooch and Lap Rock. So we're concerned about everything having to do with the rivers and water flow and aquifer. And first I'd like to congratulate you on the ordinance you recently passed against fracking, because that would be a really bad idea in aquifer here. Mr. Quarterman, uh, that audience having a hard time hearing you. Um mm -hmm. I guess I can just lean over. How's that? No, no, I'm just going over here. Well, what if I speak louder? Speak, right? there you go. All right, I can do that. Okay, so I came here to talk about the Sable Trail Pipeline. Uh, the biggest problem with that is probably most people never heard of it and don't know what it is. They hear that name, they think it's a hiking trail. It is not a hiking trail. It is supposed to be a 36 inch, inch diameter natural gas pipeline under high pressure. And uh, you may wonder, Whoops, I've got through Madison County. It no longer is even aimed to go through Madison County. Uh, thanks to some people in Hamilton County who worked really hard to stop that, including the Hamilton County Commission. However, it would go just east of Withacoochee River, within about half a mile, for example, of Madison Blue Spring. And there's lots of evidence over decades showing that water travels underground much farther than that. For example, in Lowndes County, where I live, just north of the line there, uh, 15 miles as far as that to get to Valdosta's water wells. That's way closer than that. And you're probably familiar with last year, Swanee River Water Management District did a dye test. They put in dye at Falmouth Spring over in Swanee County, and some of it came up in Swanee Spring in Madison County. Went under the Swanee River and came back down. So traveling under the river to get to, for example, Madison Blue Spring, we don't know it can't do that. Now, what might travel? Well, the drilling, they're going to use horizontal directional drilling under the rivers, open cutting, and that sort of construction technique. That can trigger sinkholes. As we all know, sinkholes just happen anyway, even if you don't trigger them. And a sinkhole could let drilling fluids or anything that comes out of the pipeline or other contaminants into the aquifer. The, uh, Pipeline company, when it posts with the SEC every year to stay listed on the stock exchange, says that anything coming out of their pipe has to be considered hazardous materials because it's had, for example, PCBs leak out of some of this pipe before. So clearly that's a problem, and um, you, you probably got the message I sent with some word about corrosion, leaks, explosions. This company has decades of uh, examples of that. Most recently in Pennsylvania, it blew up incinerated trees around the house, incinerated the house, sent its owner to the hospital with third degree burns. So it, it, it's bad news. And uh, a year before that, the same pipeline by the same company blew up under the Arkansas River in, in Little Rock. You can see it from the Clinton Library. Uh, we want that blowing up under a river here. Uh, I don't think so. And it's really, you know. The pipeline company, Spectre Energy, or its consortium, Sable Trail, will say there's very little chance of that. Well, I'm not so sure there's a little chance, but why should we take any chance, given that there's really no need for this pipeline? The excuse is that FPL needs it for power. But look at Southern Company. I go to Southern Company stockholder meetings every year, and until last year, they were saying, Solar power, maybe at the end of the decade. Last year, they said, we're selling it now. And they're also selling it in Florida, because the Southern Company owns Gulf Power, which is in the Panhandle. And Gulf Power is right now building more solar farms, more, more megawatts, than FDL is in all of Florida. 
Let the yellow eventually catch up. Also at the seven company meeting, the CEO talked about 11% savings in power needs through conservation and efficiency. If FPL did that, there would be no need for this pipeline. A combination of conservation, efficiency, and solar power, and there would be no need for it. If you're an FPL ratepayer, by the way, you're already paying for this pipeline. You know it isn't <coughs> um, And an important thing to know about this pipeline, Sable Trail would have you think that it has all the permits it needs. It's a done deal, but it simply is not so. Uh, and in Georgia, I'm proud to say Walt's Watershed Coalition helped convince the Georgia legislature, the Georgia House of Representatives, by a vote of 128 to 34 to reject easements for Sable Trail to drill under any river in Georgia. And the entire legislature passed the bill without those easements, and they don't meet again until next January. So there's no easements for Sable Trail until at least next January. And if legislators stick to what they said, their concerns about property rights and water, then there will be no easements. Georgia has also not approved the Clean Water Act Section 401 permit. And last I heard, Alabama had not either. That's the same permit that the state of New York denied for another natural gas pipeline, which is generally considered to be unless that's overruled by a court, that's the end of the pipeline. So if Georgia actually does not issue that one, there's probably no pipeline. Now, you know, it's Georgia, so I'm not going to bet they're not going to issue it. But according to the Clean Water Act, it was actually illegal for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to issue a certificate of convenience and necessity without those state permits. Sable Trail says, well, there's a lot of precedent they do it anyway in anticipation of it. But there's lawyers in New York State arguing that point. And if they win, then no permit. The Sable Trail also does not have a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which is supposed to consider cumulative evidence of all sorts of water issues and basically anything else. They can consider safety, for example. And they have not issued a pipeline, and uh, the Clean Water Act says they should not let all the state permits, and practically speaking, the Corps usually does not until they get all the state permits. So what I'm here to ask you to do is to do what Hamilton County, Swanee County, and Marion County have done, which is to write a letter to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and ask for a supplemental environmental impact statement. That basically opens the process where new evidence can be sent in and the court then has to consider it seriously. Now, this costs you nothing if you want to do it, and because the pipeline isn't even aimed to go through Madison County, that should give your letter extra weight. Look, the county that the pipeline wouldn't even go through is concerned about its effect on the hockey. So that's basically what I'm here to ask you to do. And also, if you felt like having a word with Representative Ted Yovo, we had a meeting where he and representatives from um, uh, you know, Senator Nelson's office and some uh, local elected officials and candidates came and saw sinkholes on Swanee River State Park in Hamilton County that this was drilled directly under. And he, he uh, said he was going to talk to Thor about it. He's fault. He hasn't resolved anything. Now he's taking the right a letter. Could you please ask him to go ahead and ask him to open this up to the environmental impact statement? So that's what I'm asking. And uh, it's also nothing easy to do. We protect property rights and water for Florida and Madison County. Thank you. Okay. And I know that Ms. Uh, Randall had signed up for citizens' participation. Did you want this time? If I may. Yes, ma'am, please. I'll let you. Am I going to have to find them? Yes. Uh, my name is Deborah Sorry, Randall. I'm a member of WALS, board member of Spectra Busters, and a member of the Gulf Restoration Network. I've uh, been studying this pipeline for over four years, or right at four years, uh, and the company after that comes along with it. Uh, I think you need to know a little bit about the company behind pipeline and the way they operate and who all is behind it. Uh, Spectra Energy, FPL, and 
next era, which owns FDL, are the investors in the pipeline. Okay, they are all also invested in fracking. And the primary reason for the pipeline is 1.1 cubic billion feet per day coming down the pipeline is to export it. Okay, by exporting it, they will be trucking it, pipelining it, and train transporting by train via both coasts because we're talking about Jack's Port. We're talking about down at uh, Citrus County and all all down Florida. They want to export to South America, the Bahamas, and so forth, uh, uh, the Caribbean. Uh, they've been set up since 2011, I believe, these export stations now. So it's a well laid out plan. Um, I hate to say this, but our governor, Governor Scott, is invested in Spectre Energy. And um, it's just, you know, the, okay, that, that said, that's pretty pretty uh, telling itself. That was reported in several news outlets in Florida, the main one being the Florida Bulldog, which used to be uh, Broward County Bulldog. Okay, the other issue is that, uh, as John was talking about, we are in a karst area and so forth. This pipeline follows, if you can see the yellow here on this map here, can you see that? The pipeline follows, this is the USGS map of karst or sinkhole territory, it goes down at the exact, through here, the exact most dangerous area of Florida. Okay. And as John said, your county may not be impacted as it is now except for the Blue Springs issue, which is a very important part of your county. Um, but we are all connected water-wise. There are 12 routes through Suwannee County if Sable did decide, well, okay, we can't get through Georgia, they may come through Alabama and thus hit Madison County. So um, another thing I wanted to bring up to you is that, um, of course, we have the danger of the sinkholes, which you can see the blue dots everywhere. It's all along the path. Everybody can see that. Okay. And then um, we all know, I think I'll just have a sinkhole over here, didn't you not? I think I heard one, yes. Okay. But they're all, all over the place. They happen all the time. If they open up under these pipelines, you know, there's an anchor of rupture, and their, you know, their solution may be to pour concrete, whatever they can, down it to stop it, you know, if they can repair it. Um, the other issue I wanted to bring up was the rail transport has caused a lot of problems in other areas of the country with um, bomb, what they call bomb trains. These trains are coming around on rail and they blow up in the middle of the night. Virginia being one of the states recently that had that happen. Uh, you have that happening if you have rail down both the coast of Florida, we have that danger. You're having gas trucks across the state. <clears throat> and um, that's, that's definitely a danger, you know, as far as that goes all for this company to export, or these companies to export gas to other countries. There are temporary jobs available. None of them are union. None of them are, because I was at the job fair, none of them are high paying jobs. They are temporary jobs. As they move along the pipeline, they will hire other people for food service and this kind of thing, but they're bringing in their own crews, which brings a whole other set of problems. I know they may not impact your county now, but if they do change routes and they don't go through Georgia because of what Mr. Foreman said, it will come through Madison County. I mean, one of the routes, they'll have to come around Georgia. So, you know, you're still in danger. So, that being said, uh, the 1.1 million gas and the fact that they're all involved in fracking and they're all involved in this, this is the purpose of the pipeline. 1.1 billion cubic feet of gas is quite a bit of gas per day under high pressure. Um, going to export facilities, um, uh, some is going to FPL because they're going to claim a need that's where they get the public need and necessity. Um, they're only asking for 600 million tops cubic feet. I don't know what you're asking for. I haven't seen anything on that. Uh, in Citrus County, which they're building their gas turbine right next to the failing nuclear plant, which is kind of not brilliant. Um, 
Anyway, the other the other positive, other danger that we all and I call I contacted you um, a couple of years ago. I contacted the board over here about I believe it was H HB 807 Home Rule Revocation. Tron has tried to have that passed from Bay County. He's now on the BCS. Uh, now, last year, they had attached to a fracking bill that they were trying to pass through the legislature. They had a um, home rule revocation rule attached to that so that they can go through and remove any bans or ordinances or your authority to govern your county to protect your citizens. And I find that very disturbing. I mean, I think it's a violation of our government. So, in essence, um, you know, I don't see why we here in Florida, in a high danger area, should put up with or have to be put our sole source of water is our Florida aquifer. Ninety percent of the water, groundwater, is provides water to the citizens of Florida. Okay, if that is 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 polluted, what are we going to drink? You know, uh, one of our major, uh, well, our major um, industry is tourism and ecotourism, cave diving. Uh, people come here for the springs, the beaches, etc. You know, do you want all this ruined by pipelines running? They're also talking about running another pipeline up from the Tampa Bay area, from Tepco, back to Jacksport to from Sable Trails feed off there and FDL's feed off to supply gas to be exported out of Jacksonville. So what I'm here to ask you to do is to consider uh, writing a resolution and it's, it's been done in other counties, uh, 25 plus counties have written resolutions or an ordinance would be even better as it's law to ban pipelines, to ban Sable Trail pipeline, at least or pipelines of this nature. The FGT pipeline and Sunman are not at capacity. We do not need gas. We don't need it. And we are the Sunshine State. Uh, FPL and Duke have a monopoly where they they are keeping solar out. They're doing their best to keep solar out of our state. Are you referring to the pipeline that we currently have that comes in out here at the city limits? That would be FGT. Uh, I get confused a little bit because well, it comes from Taylor County all the way up and it terminates that's, right down it, here, 53 South, and that's what supplies the city of Madison. Right, right. They, that's a different. You know, you're talking about what a 12, 16 inch pipeline that's composed to a 36 inch, 1.1 billion cubic foot. Let's get some gas out of the country pipeline. Do you understand what I'm saying? But yes, sir, I am. There are two pipelines. If I'm not mistaken, and they're both run under the Gulf. That, you know, there was alternatives to doing this, say with this pipeline this way, it, they got squashed because it was just easy for them to come down and just say, hey, we don't matter. As a matter of fact, in administrative court, when Walls uh, brought up, a, we sued Sable Trail for about the pipeline, they said we used the better pipe in rural areas. That was, that was the statement. And then it's like, do we matter at all? I mean, because we're human too, just because we don't live in a city. You know, why are you using thinner pipeline? Because it's a rural area. I mean, you know, that attitude, that uh, the fact that they have the worst EPA violations, one of, I've got to say that as a legal disclaimer, one of the worst history <coughs> EPA violations, and that includes the spilling of PCBs. The PHMSA is all over them with fines and so forth for the two incidents that happened last year and prior incidents before that. And there's no doubt it's for race. That's my time up. <coughs> Has anybody got any questions that you'd like to ask? Any concerns? Any questions? Well, Mr. Chair, and uh, I guess when you seek council advice on this, I don't think we can put anything in the orders to ban pipelines. Can well, again, it's not coming through our county, so I haven't, I, I didn't do a lot of research on that. But the, the, there is a pipeline siting act that uh, applies in Florida where the, uh, uh, that is, decisions on pipelines are made ultimately by the governor and cabinet. 
So we could not, for instance, through our LDR, say that we don't allow pipelines uh, in Madison. Now, that's all been preempted to the state. Um, so we don't have regulatory authority to do that. Um, if you all wish to, to send letters or resolutions or whatever, I mean, you certainly can do that. Um, the uh, uh, to the extent you feel comfortable doing that. But I don't think you'd be able to regulate that area. Right. There again, Governor Scott is invested in Spectre Energy, and he was invested in the last fracking <coughs> company, which was Dan A. Hughes down in Maple Four. So, I mean, that's, and his cabinet, I mean, kind of our hands are tied there until we can stop this monopoly of uh, FPL and Duke and um, investments. In <coughs> Any more questions or anything I can answer? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. As to uh, Mr. Porterman's uh, uh, request um, referring to a uh, asking the Army Corps of Engineers to go to the Supplemental Environmental Impact Statement. Yes. That, that was Mr. Porterman's request. Right. So what's the plan? Do you have a draft letter? Um, yes, and I can send you the ones that were sent by Hamilton County, Swanee County, and Marion County. They're easy to adapt. Yeah, this, I'll send this them to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think if you're on acting, just by consensus, get a copy and y'all review it. Yes. Thank you. So I don't know if anybody can understand or hear what we was just by consensus. The board would like to get a copy of your draft letter and re agenda it, give us time to look at it and re agenda and come back to the commission at our next meeting if you can get us the letter. I can get it to you by tomorrow. Thank right, you. Thank you, sir. Um, sir.